So if you were to do a search online for tying tools, you're gonna find endless lists and a bunch of funky names. Bodkin, whip finisher. As a beginner tire, it's gonna get overwhelming real quick. My name is Alex and I'm part of the team here at Ventures Fly Co. And this is module two of our beginner fly tying masterclass. In the last section, we talked all about the vise. Today, we're covering the essential fly tying tools that every beginner needs to get started. So let's dive in. We've broken down these tools into two main categories. Foundational tools that you're gonna need right off the bat. We've called these the needs. And then there's some that aren't completely necessary. You might consider adding them now, or you might consider adding them on later down the road when you're moving on to more intermediate and advanced patterns. We'll start off with the needs. First on our list is scissors. So you're gonna be using scissors a lot. Every single fly, you're gonna be trimming thread, feathers, and a whole bunch of other materials throughout the entire tying process. So that being said, these aren't just your normal everyday scissors. These are super sharp, really fine pointed scissors because you're cutting such small materials that you need to get into those small spaces and make really precise, accurate cuts. And then something that's gonna help you make smooth cuts that grab onto the material without it sliding is a micro serrated edge. And then probably the most important thing when selecting a pair of tying scissors is their durability and sharpness. And that's gonna come from the material that's used to make them. So as far as durability and sharpness are concerned, tungsten carbide is gonna be greater than surgical grade stainless steel, which is gonna be greater than just stainless steel. And as you get into tying more and more, it's not unlikely that you'll be spending an hour or two hours at your tying desk. I would recommend that you find some scissors that are comfy, evenly balanced, and just an overall pleasant experience to use. All right, number two on our list of needs is a bobbin holder. Your bobbin holder is by far going to be your most used tool. This is what's gonna hold your thread as you're tying the flies. So some important features to look for when you're choosing a bobbin, definitely make sure it has some ceramic inserts. This is gonna protect your fine tying thread and prevent any breaking or fraying during the tying process. Another important feature is an adjustable wire frame or some other way to adjust the tension on that thread. And then because you're using a bobbin so much, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure it's made of something that's really durable. For example, the one in this picture, it's made of stainless steel. And then as I'm wrapping thread around that fly, I want it to be comfortable, I want it to be balanced. I just want it to be an overall pleasant experience while I'm tying. All right, let's get into need number three, the whip finisher. So this fancy little tool is gonna help you create the knot that finishes off your fly. Doing this the proper way is gonna ensure that your fly doesn't come apart while you're fishing. All right, need number four, tackle plier. So if you're gonna tie dry flies or if you need to grip small or slippery materials, hackle pliers are gonna grip those materials a lot better than your fingers and help you get the job done. All right, number five, bodkin. I've heard a lot of fly tires say that their desk isn't complete without a bodkin. This can be used to apply head cement or clear a hook eye or touch up a fly, tease out dubbing fibers, tons and tons of applications. Definitely a helpful tool to add to your arsenal. All right, number six is a hair stacker. So if you're tying any fly that requires hair, a hair stacker is definitely a necessity. Working with hair can be a complete pain sometimes. You've got grease, you've got static, you've got random lengths of hair. So using a hair stacker helps you line up those hair edges evenly and makes tying up a pattern like an elk hair caddis much easier. And then last on our list of needs, number seven, good lighting. So flies, they're small, materials, they're small, and just having a good set of lighting is gonna make an enormous difference in your tying process. I personally use a little overhead light like this that I just got off Amazon, it works great. It definitely makes it easier to see and the entire tying process more enjoyable. All right, good work. We finished our list of needs. Now, 
Let's move on to those tools that you might consider adding right now, or if you wanna just add them on later down the road as you move on to intermediate and advanced patterns, that works too. All right, number one on our wants is a bobbin threader. This is used to take the thread that's dangling off of your thread spool and thread it or string it through your bobbin. Now I was hesitant to put this on the want list because I freaking love my bobbin threader. It makes it way easier to get that thread through that small little tube. Now technically we had to put it on the want list because you can thread your bobbin by just sliding it through the hole and then sucking on the end of the tube. But personally, I find it annoying I don't wanna do that, so I love my bobbin threader. All right, want number two is some extra scissors. So we talked about having a really nice pair of super sharp fine tip scissors, but you definitely don't wanna use those to cut wire or metal tinsel or thick skins or those materials that are gonna dole them out really quick. And so that's when it's nice to have a pair of scissors that I wouldn't say you don't really care about, but that you don't have to worry about them as much. All right, so want number three. Some of the more higher end beginner, intermediate and advanced patterns use something called a dubbing loop. So this nifty little tool helps you do just that. Create a dubbing loop and easily wrap it around your fly. All right, so want number four is a brush and comb. I love having this thing on my tying desk. I use it to tease out dubbing fibers or brush out under fur and for any last step touch-ups that I need on my flies. Want number five is tweezers. Now these aren't just like your regular everyday tweezers that you might use to pull out a sliver. These have long arms and a fine tip. So with that fine tip, you're gonna be able to pick up beads or hooks or eyes. And then these long arms, they're gonna help you clamp down materials when you're creating dubbing loops like we talked about earlier. But like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are endless and endless lists of fly tying tools. There seems to be one for every specific purpose under the sun. For example, you've got hackle gauges. They're gonna help you tell what size your hackle fibers are. You've got foam cutters when tying terrestrials or big old foam bugs. There's lots of desk and tool organizers, lots and lots of specific tools. And I would personally recommend as a beginner to just stay away from those, kind of put some blinders on and just focus on the base that we've talked about today. And then as you start getting into tying a lot more, you can consider adding those on down the road. Now we just want to briefly discuss if you should buy these tools individually or in a kit. So let's talk about the pros and cons of both. So when you buy tools individually, you're able to decide exactly what tools you want and you can opt for those higher quality tools. Now let's say you spend the majority of your budget on your scissors, that whip finisher or another tool might get neglected a little bit, or you might buy them from a different company that doesn't have those same high quality standards. And so you might find that there's some inconsistencies among your tools. And then another pro is you get what you need. There's no fluff, there's no tools in your kit that the company just added in there to provide more value. But on the flip side, trying to find all of those tools yourself, you're gonna have to put in more effort and it might get confusing as you have to browse through the rows and rows of tying tools. And then as you're buying these tools individually, it usually comes out to be more expensive. Now let's talk about a kit. Just like we mentioned that buying tools individually can be more expensive, buying them in a kit is usually more cost effective. But on the other side, Kits are usually known for being lower quality, but because all of the tools are made by the same company, every one of the tools in the kit is usually the same quality. So if you have high quality scissors, you usually have a high quality whip finish, a high quality bobbin holder, but sometimes these companies add in random unneeded tools just to seem like the kit is bigger and worth more than it is. And then probably the most compelling reason to get a kit is that it requires less effort and eliminates confusion. You add one thing to the cart, you check out, boom. You got all the tools, it's super easy. And so our purpose, our little tagline here at Ventures Fly Co is that we make fly fishing easy. And we've tried to make fly tying easier. And so about a year and a half ago, we made this list and we were like, well, why don't we just take all the pros, put them together and eliminate all the cons? And that's exactly what we tried to do. 
when we came up with our all-rounder toolkits. We made sure that they were premium quality, that every single tool in the entire kit was up to par, that you got exactly what you needed, that there was no fluff, that it was all in one kit, really easy, eliminating the confusion. And then because it's in a kit, we made it more cost effective. I would say the only con is that it seems too good to be true. Now, even if you decide to go down another route as far as tools are concerned, or if you already have tools, we're 110% dedicated to your success as a fly tire. So if you have any follow-up questions, be sure to leave them in a comment below. Up next is module three. We're gonna talk all about materials, hooks, beads, thread, hackle, wire, feathers, you name it, we're gonna talk about it. See you there.